So I'm going to start this with the cautionary tale, which is radio, and the 1996 Telecommunications Act, because that really was a slap in the face that a lot of us in Washington, uh, when, when, that, when that legislation passed, we realized how important these decisions can be and what a direct impact that decisions in Washington can have in the music community. Now, the 1996 Telecommunications Act was this massive piece of legislation that, that really looked at all sorts of different issues like telecommunications competition and, and all sorts of stuff. But tucked into it was a very simple piece of legislation, a very simple amendment that the commercial radio lobby, the National Association of Broadcasters, had pushed for. And what they did in the 1996 Telecommunications Act, with very little debate, nobody really paid attention to this, there wasn't a lot of arguing about this, they just kind of put it in the mix, kind of gave the broadcasters there, so that, you know, so that it was. Is Congress eliminated the historic limit on how many radio stations any one company could own? Over time, the limit had kind of creeped upward, but in 1996, the national limit on radio station ownership was 40. In local markets, the, the, the most stations any one company could own was four. And the reason that these limits were in place is because government had always had this, this, this philosophy, this regulatory uh, priorities, these regulatory priorities of localism, competition, and diversity. The idea with radio is that it's public spectrum, it's stuff that we own. And the, the FCC was established to serve as a manager, to oversee the decisions that get made in terms of how corporate interests then take that public asset and what they do with it. And how they you know, sort of have public interest obligations to make sure that radio, you know, you can go make a profit, but at the same time, you have to be connected to your community, you have to be doing something that's positive. And so in 1996, when Congress eliminated this national cap, it paved the way immediately over the next couple of years for massive transformation how radio stations uh, are owned in this country. We moved from a, 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 an industry that was fundamentally locally owned with a lot of local connection, local control, to an industry where two-thirds of listeners and revenue were controlled by ten companies. In virtually every market, 70% of advertising revenue is controlled by four or fewer companies. And these companies were typically not local companies, they're typically out-of-town companies. Now, as a direct result of that, we lost one-third of radio station owners in less than 10 years. They just went away. These stations tend to be locally owned stations. They also tend to be the stations that played niche music. So we've seen the elimination, as I think most of you know, in many markets, and, and there are anomalies. There are great radio stations all over the country that are bucking the trend. But fundamentally, we see the end of classical music, the end of jazz music, the end of you know, folk, bluegrass, blues, all the niche genres that had a place on commercial radio are gone. Uh, you've also seen the evolution of what we call structural payola. You know, this, this very you know, sort of insidious dynamic where 80% of music released in this country comes from small local independent record labels, but virtually none of that music has the opportunity to get on commercial radio. <coughs> so what you saw basically was that Congress, without really thinking about it, without debating it, without really having an understanding of the implications of what they're going to do, dropping a bomb on this industry, which is critically important to the music community, <coughs> and basically heading us down this path where you know, essentially that, that this resource has become fundamentally underutilized in a very dramatic and important way.